morning everyone welcome back to the channel we are here in the parking lot of the arm and hammer headquarters here in ewing new jersey to take a look at a 2022 kia sorento this one is the x-line trim we've had two other sorentos on the channel the sx and the ex hybrid this one is the first x-line trim x-line in the Sorento model line is their off-road focus trim. This one happens to be in Aruba Green, which is an additional cost color of about $450 on the Sorento. We have the new 2022 Kia badge right in the middle of this Tiger Nose grill in gloss black. We have gloss black on the bottom of the uh, the grill as well with flat black along the bottom we have underneath some plastic protective gear i don't see any skid plates like i would expect to see on an off-roader trim all right headlights daytime running lights are all led all the way around and also this has the led interior lighting as well all right, wheel and tire setup on this Sorento. The X-Line gets you an 18-inch wheel, gloss black wheel with the Kia badge in the middle. It gets you 235, 60 on the width, 18s, all seasons, all four corners, all wheel drive. Looking at the car as a whole, I like what they've done with the Sorento redesign, which was for 2021. I think it looks like a very handsome car. I like the body lines that go across the top of the door handles, as well as that line that goes along the bottom of the, uh, the two doors. And the rear haunch looks really good. It's a very, very handsome looking package. We do have the fuel filler cap on the left. As we move in closer, we have our flat black around the wheel arches. We have our X-Line badge here with a nice design, which I like. We have gloss black on the mirrors. So when you have gloss black on the mirrors, they can get scratched. So I do not like the gloss black. I would like to see this color matched. LED turn signals, color matched on the two door handles. Up top, color match shark fin antenna. And this one has the panoramic sunroof as well as these flat black roof rails. As we come around the back of the Sorento, the rear wiper is tucked up underneath this roof spoiler, protecting it from the elements and car washes. It'll swoop down and clean off your window. Cleans up the whole back area as well. We have the Kia badge here, the Sorento script underneath, flat black on the bumper, and we have LED taillights. No skid blades in the back either. All right, engine time. What we're looking at here is a two and a half liter, naturally aspirated four cylinder engine, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission, making 191 horsepower, 176 pound feet of torque, MPGs 23 in the city, 25 on the highway, 24 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. All right, we are inside the Sorento X-Line, and before we get started with the interior review, Mike, how much does it cost? Well, the way this particular X-Line S trim is optioned, we're looking at an MSRP of $37,000. $535. So let's check out the interior. Starting with the foot pucks, we have a nice large dead pedal, brake and accelerator, all with rubber finish. We have the Sorento carpeted floor mats, which is nice. We have electric assist for the driver, but we have manual assist for the front passenger on the seats. This is black faux leather, fake leather. So no cows were killed in the making of this interior. Nice design, nice white cross stitch, nice bolstering, very comfortable. I like the seats. 
Door panels, I like the design. I like the soft touch material up top. I like this open pour wood around the uh, door handle, which has got that brushed aluminum finish. There's flat black on the switch gear, so no fingerprints. And we have some silver trim along the grab handle and a pretty decent door pocket. We move on to the dash, soft touch material up top. Again, this open pour wood, which is a nice look, elevates the interior. We have a little silver trim, soft touch material underneath, and then the glove box, nice and large. All right, here he is with our familiar 10.25 inch Kia infotainment system. Touch screen capability, of course it's a touch screen. Dual panel action, yes, of course we have dual panel action, which is nice. We have all of our buttons here on the left to go through your map, your nav, radio, media controls, as well as your system setup. So if you hit your system setup, this will get you into your actual uh, areas to configure the car the way you would, uh, would like it. We can hit that button, go back to map, put the car in reverse, and we have our nice backup camera with trajectory as well as your rear sensing over here. There's no 3D cameras in this car because in order to get the 3D cameras, you need to move up to the X-Line SX Prestige. As we move down further, we have dual climate control, as you can see with front and rear defrost. And here's your auto button. You have three stages of auto. I have it on low right now because it blows pretty hard when you have it up on the, on the third one. We have our vents here on either side. And then some more vents down here, which I think is kind of neat. Then down below, two, uh, three USBs. Excuse me, three USBs. We have heated seats, three stages for the driver. And three stage heated seat for the front passenger. No ventilated seats. Again, to get ventilated seats, you need to move up to the SX Prestige. And that will also get you the heated steering wheel. Moving down, we have our gear shift to go through this 8-speed automatic transmission. We have two cup holders. Then we have our Kia key fob right here. Looking nice. Detonator style key fob. Lock, unlock. We have our panic button and remote start. As you can see, there is no button on this uh, key fob to open up the rear tailgate. It, the tailgate's a manual assist, so it will not show up here on your key fob. We have a, a, a little snack tray here, which is nice. And then we have our mode buttons where we can go from comfort to sport to smart to eco to snow. Center diff lock. Start stop function of the engine off, hill descent control. This is a turn on your rear parking camera right here, and this is a turn off your off your rear parking sensors. Why every car has that, I have no idea. Center armrest, nice and soft, I like it. And then as we open it up, we have a snack tray and then a nice big storage storage area in the center. Kia steering wheel, have a nice leather wrapped steering wheel black with that silver or uh, light gray cross stitch. We have the Kia badge, nice aluminum trimmer on the horn button. On the uh, left side, we have our controls for our telephone and voice commands. On the right, controls for the cruise control and uh, safety suite technology. We have gloss back down here, which is gonna get some fingerprints. I would have liked to seen this maybe in silver rather than the gloss black. On your uh, stocks, we have our settings for our headlights. No fog lamps in the X-Line S. And then we have our controls on the right stock for our front and rear wipers. Moving into the dash, dashboard analog controls for speedometer and for your tachometer. But then we have in the center, we have digital controls for your fuel level and coolant temperature, and then a small four and a half inch display in the center to go through other vehicle information, such as your trip odometer, average miles per hour, how long you've been on the road. This does have driver attention warning uh, in it, which means there is a software that monitors your face and how you're seated and how you're driving. And if the car feels like you're nodding off, it will let you know maybe it's time to stop and take a coffee break, which is a nice safety feature. I like that. On the bottom left, we have our buttons to uh, brighten or dim our dash, 
we have the on off button for our lane keep assist and we have traction control off. All right, we are now in the mid row of this three row SUV. And in typical Kia fashion here in the mid row, I have plenty of room for my knees and head. This seat is set for my driving position, no problem. A lot of nice shoulder width room as well. Door panels, the same as the front. Soft touch material up top, the open pour wood surrounding that brushed aluminum finish on the door handle and flat black along the switch gear. All right, rear command center time. Two heat and air vents down below. You have a 12 volt and a USB, as well as a USB behind the driver's seat and the front passenger seat. So there's three USBs here in the back seat. Some nice dual pocket action. We have a tight leather pouch and then another cargo net behind the front driver and behind the front passenger for the rear seat storage. A cup holder in each door. And as we move the armrest down, we have a nice soft armrest with two cup holders as well. So Kia's got you covered with the connectivity and cup holder action here in the back. All right, accessing the third row. First thing we do is we push this button here on the left side of the mid row seat and that'll fold, fold the back of the seat forward and it moves up. And then all you need to do is climb in the back. All right, now we are in the third row and the leg room's a little tight for a full size adult. Headroom, my hair head pretty much touches the top. Good spot for small adults and kids, not a great spot for full size adults, but I do have cup holder and a USB on either side. So there is connectivity back here for the third row passenger, but I am missing some uh, heat and air vents back here. So it could get a little stuffy if you're on a long trip. All right, accessing the tailgate area. Since there's a manual assist, there is no uh, button to push on the key fob to open the tailgate, nor on the dashboard. So to get the tailgate open, you come up to the car, there's a button underneath the E in the Sorento badge. You push that, it clicks open, and you lift up nice and easy. And in the back here, we have pretty good amount of space with the third row up. This car does come with the, the uh, all-weather cargo uh, liner as well. And here are our third row seats. To get these down, pretty easy. You take this strap, you pull it, the headrest folds down, and then you just push them forward. Same on this side, and then you just push them forward. And now you have nice, nice amount of room for larger bags, larger suitcases, that kind of thing. And then once you got the seats all done and you need to put more stuff in here, this cargo liner will fold out. Oops, will fold out and cover everything. So it's a nice touch. And it also says Sorrento, which is kind of cool. You open up this and you have a spot for storage down here, some blankets, some towels, and the, uh, the cargo netting night is off in back here. So nice storage space here. And then on the back here, we have a 12 volt. In case you're going to the beach, you're going camping, you can plug in a cooker or blow up some rafts. And then you have a button here to take the center row down or the mid row down. And in order to do that, what you're gonna do is just push the left button and the left seat goes down and then you push the right button and the right seat goes down. The reason why that didn't fold flat is because my driver's seat is a little bit far back. Um, but when you get it all done, you have a lot more space for those larger items from Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you go to get your big items, you can put it all in here. Really nice storage space here in the back of the Sorento. All right, we are now driving the Sorento X-Line S. And we're just pulling out of the Arm & Hammer corporate parking lot. And we're heading down the road. <clears throat> and my first impressions are that the engine's got good power. You know, 191 horsepower is 
isn't bad at a naturally aspirated four cylinder. It's got the eight speed automatic, so it's very, very smooth. I have great visibility out of the front windshield and the side glass. I have huge side view mirrors that do have blind spot detection. Um, and then I have plenty of room for, uh, for vision out the uh, rear, rear, ooh, 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 rear window. Handling is light but direct, which I would expect out of a family SUV with three rows, seven passenger capacity. And uh, we're going to take this up on the highway, see how she, uh, she merges onto the highway and how she cruises at highway speed. Now, the X-Line S comes with the naturally aspirated engine at 191. If you need more power, you need to upgrade to the X-Line EX or the X-Line SX Prestige. That'll get you the turbocharged 2.5 liter at 281 on the horsepower. So that'll get you a lot more power, but again, a step up in price. And we're, we're merging very smoothly here onto Interstate 295. No problem at all. The uh, eight-speed automatic is very, very smooth on the shifts. And now it is very, very smooth on the highway. Again, this is their X-Line, their off-road uh, trim. It looks more aggressive with the black wheels. I love the Aruba green paint. You know, the tires are more geared for, for off-road um, than for uh, your standard uh, standard tires that come on the, uh, you know, S or uh, EX or SX. So the X-Line gives you some nicer styling. I like the styling on the X-Line better. The X-Line S is the entry trim for the X-Line. It's X-Line S, X-Line EX, and then S-Line SX Prestige. That's how it works. Um, you're looking at 37.5 with the panoramic sunroof that uh, for this car, if you spec up an X-Line SX Prestige, you're now you're coming up on 47 G's to, if you load it all up. Uh, and then you're encroaching on Telluride S SX pricing. So for me, I think this is a good spot to be. You get a lot of tech, you get the heated uh, seats, but you're missing out on ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel, and wireless charging. You got to go SX Prestige to get those features. So you have to decide for yourself: is it worth a uh, an eight to nine thousand dollar bump in price for those extra features? Now we have Grandpa here in the Grand Marquee, so we're going to see how this passing power is. what it gets the job done it's not the greatest you know 191 horsepower in a car that's 4,000 pounds it's going to take a little while to get up to speed there's no doubt about it but you're going to get better gas mileage see how she does coming off the highway on the ramp on the brakes nice got some body roll But overall pretty responsive so I like how stable the Sorento is um, you know it's almost as big as the Telluride uh, and you know it's also a three row like the Telluride not as wide a little bit narrower but it just feels so stable on the road smooth on the road as far as the driving experience as far as comfort well, you do have it in comfort mode, which I think is where most people are going to be using this on a daily basis. I would recommend it if you're going to do a lot of highway driving with this car, put it in eco mode, set the cruise on 70, and you'll be getting, I guarantee you, you'll get better than the 25 mile per gallon highway they have rated on this car. Um, I have friends of mine that have these particular Sorrentos, 2021s, and they're getting over 30 miles to the gallon. Eco mode, set cruise on 70, 
and just go for a nice long drive wherever you may be road tripping and they're getting really good gas mileage so that's a testimonial from them i haven't experienced it personally myself but i trust what they tell me since they're in the car industry and they've chosen this car over a telluride and they've chosen this car over the new sportage so this this brings something to the table and i really like the way they redesigned it i think it looks really really nice but I, as i was getting back to how stable it is i mean the doors close it feels well built it feels the fit and finish on it is really nice the interior appointments even for the entry level x line are really nice and so i really have to give kudos to kia for building such a good suv and one that is going to be easier on your wallet for gas because you're putting in regular rather than needing to use the plus grade or super for that matter so i think they've really done a nice job with this car um, <clears throat> and i want to thank the owner of this car for making it available to the channel for review this morning um, I, I really really appreciate it I wanted to do an x-line trim very difficult to find at the dealers right now and I wanted to do one in Aruba green because I think this is a great great color on this car great color uh, so let me know what you guys think in the comments about the Sorento is this something that you would look at or if we're close enough to the Telluride in price and size do you just bump up the Telluride or on the other side with Kia the Sportage for 2023 has gotten much bigger seven inches longer that encroaches on this car so would you go Sportage and maybe save a little money because the pricing on the Sportage is a little bit lower than it is on Sorento so let me know your thoughts or are you going in a completely different direction and going with the competition honda pilot toyota highlander you know uh hyundai palisade even though that's more like a telluride um mitsubishi outlander there's one that you don't always think about let me know your thoughts in the comments below i want to thank everyone for watching today if you did enjoy this video please give a give it a like please consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you on the rebound. Take care.